Episode 288, Hero Saves the Damsel. Alan and the others heard Jenna's indignation, but did not have the slightest thought of retreat. On the contrary, Alan just leaned closer to her and smiled lewdly. Jenna frowned. She didn't seem to realize the situation she was in. She said coldly, I'm from the Shu family in Arkland City. Are you sure you want to offend the Shu family? According to her past experiences, anyone who hears the word Shu retreated in fear. But this group was not playing according to the rules of common sense. They all looked at each other and said blankly, Shu family? Is it famous? Never heard of it. It's not surprising that these people were ignorant. After all, they seemed to be coming from Langley. How would they know the terrible weight of two words from a Shu family member in Arkland City? So when Jenna saw that the group continued to approach her car, she finally began to panic. My father is Jonathan Shu. Haven't you heard of him? I clearly haven't, so shut up, Alan rebuked. He suddenly showed a wretched smile and said, Why don't we go to the woods and you could tell me yourself? The gangster suddenly echoed his smile, which made Jenna's face pale. She finally realized the danger she was in. When Jenna recalled all the kidnapping and murder stories she had seen in novels and TV dramas, she felt cold. His innocent body may be left on the side of the road by the end of the day. Hello? Anyone? Help! She cried. In her extreme panic, Jenna's pride had already been completely shattered. No one will come to save you if you lose your voice like that. Just as Jenna shivered and watched the group of people getting closer and closer in horror, a strange engine roared suddenly from the distance. Everyone was surprised and looked to the source of the sound. They saw a silver-white phantom suddenly jumping out of the horizon, hurtling quickly toward the crowd. Seeing that a car appeared, Jenna saw hope in an instant and called for its help. A silver-white sports car? It must be the guy we're after! Aiden! Somebody stop him! Seeing the appearance of the sports car, Alan and the others immediately left Jenna alone and angrily began getting in formation, hoping to repeat the technique that they used on her and block the sports car in the middle of the road. But suddenly, Jenna, who heard Aiden's name from this group of people, was too stunned to move. She was free now to drive away, but she couldn't think of leaving at that moment. Instead, she stared with a blank look at the silver-white sports car. It was most certainly the White Knight. Aiden, as usual, was frowning slightly from the back seat. He looked at this group of cyclists approaching him. Knowing what Frank had told them about Alan's gang, it wasn't hard to put together who these people were. Aiden cast a puzzled glance at Jenna and the pink sports car. He didn't know why she was here, although he had heard Jenna's cry for help. But no matter what, he would not let go of this group of people easily. Doblar, watch out! He warned as one motorcycle stopped right in front of the car. Doblar stopped the white knight steadily and emerged from the car to confront the cyclists. Alan and others saw a middle-aged man had been driving the car and were rather surprised. According to intelligence, Aiden was a 16-year-old boy. Were they wrong again? Because of the window setting of the white knight, people outside could not see that Aiden was there too. Alan approached Doblar. Hello, is there an Aiden Dale in your car? He asked. Doblar didn't return a word, but kept a cool look the whole time, approaching Alan step by step. Are you dumb? The gangster saw that Doblar did not reply and began heading toward him, ready to teach him a lesson. More than a dozen people were approaching Doblar, and each face was as determined and ferocious as the last. I asked, are you stupid? One gangster clenched his fist, jumped high, and aimed for Doblar's head. If he were hit by this fist, it would certainly be a bloody end. At the same time, many other thugs rushed toward Doblar from other sides. In their eyes, Doblar was seconds away from being on the ground, and they would then have their fun with him. Looking at this scene, Jenna couldn't help exclaiming, Be careful! But even in the face of an army of assailants, Doblar still looked indifferent. He moved his eyes to and fro, and instantly determined the best position to be in. Right after the flash of the first fist, Doblar began shooting. The gangsters closest to him began flying backward, gravely injured. Some of the group who had been watching and waiting with snickers and sneers were now beginning to frenzy. They were about to prepare for action, but Doblar did not give them a chance. A few jumped between, on the ground and a few more hide. In less than 10 seconds, the only gangster left standing was Alan. Looking at Doblar, still approaching him step by step, Alan only felt dizzy. 
He usually roamed the countryside, lawless. He was skilled enough to fight people of Frank's skill level, but Doblars? He realized now that he never stood a chance. Looking at the wailing of his subordinates, Alan suddenly covered his heart, closed his eyes, and collapsed onto the side of the motorcycle. He was terrified by Doblar's power! It was often said that the most arrogant people are most afraid of death, which was certainly the case for Alan. Doblar shook his head contemptuously and looked at the direction of the White Knight. In the car, Aiden watched in amusement. That group of poor hunks were silenced in seconds. With Aiden around, Doblar's strength was ignored by many people. Although he was the security guard of Midnight Snack Corner, he was also the former captain of the Wolf Pack. No small feat. With Doblar's skill, to deal with these gangsters was as easy as swatting at flies. At that moment, when Aiden came down out of the White Knight, Jenna exclaimed, Are you really the guy they were after? She had been cruel to Aiden, but today he saved her. For a moment, Jenna's heart was swept up in complex feelings. Indirect heroism, seduction skills plus one, Aiden saw that Jenna had also been accosted by the gang and he came over to Jenna's sports car. With concern, he asked, Is it okay? Jenna looked at Aiden's face, grateful for his sudden appearance. He had saved her. But he also couldn't believe that he was the original target of the group of thugs. Now that they were no longer a danger, anger bubbled up in her heart. This is all your fault, you freak hillbilly! She trembled. Disaster follows you everywhere you go, doesn't it? You know... I never had any bad luck like this before I met you, and now it's just constant. Facing Jenna's machine gun like barrage, Aiden had to smile awkwardly. He knew that Jenna was just an innocent bystander, but wow. Regardless, he knew that if she had been attacked and hurt, he would have blamed himself. So Aiden kept silent, allowing the girl to vent her anger. After five minutes of cursing, Jenna stopped breathing. She snorted coldly, glanced at Doblar, who was making himself busy on his phone, and said sarcastically, Fortunately, this guy was here. Otherwise, hmm, you know, you should thank him. At this time, Doblar knelt down to tighten the rope that tied the wounded bikers together, brushed off his hands, and came to Aiden's side. With my binding skills, they can't move a finger, he assured. Looking at the way Doblar treated Aiden, Jenna was a bit stunned. They had a more informal relationship than she would have expected. Aiden smiled and introduced Doblar to Jenna. This is my bodyguard, Ross Doblar. Doblar looked up and nodded to Jenna. He had to guess the relationship between the beautiful girl and Aiden. Jenna could not help choking, but quickly took a contemptuous glance at Aiden. It's really a useless waste that you should need a security guard to take care of you. Then she angrily glared at Aiden and drove the pink sports car away. Watching Jenna as she disappeared down the road, Aiden shrugged with a bitter smile. He was now able to add waste to the list of titles Jenna had given him. His lack of understanding of her only got deeper and deeper. And in the corner of Aiden's eye, he noticed that Alan, who had fainted, had not been tied up by Doblar yet. His fingers moved and his eyes slowly opened. Alan painfully looked at his attackers, face defiant. Aiden Dale, you are here. This is all your fault. Do me a favor and die. Alan suddenly pulled out a dagger from the back of his waist and leaped towards Aiden, brandishing it. Aiden was calm, not even looking at the martial man. arts. He just kicked one. his right leg out behind a him. A bone shattering sound came from behind as Alan flew through the air and crashed onto the ground, rolling several times before coming to a stop. The dagger had already flown out of his hand and he lay silent on the side of the road, this time completely passed out. Car sounds were coming from the distance. In order to avoid unnecessary trouble, Aiden let Doblar finish tying up the lot and toss them into the woods. He planned to wait for the police to arrive and clean up the situation, while he continued on his way to Arkland City. Doblar, call Brenda and tell her that there are some persons of interest tied up in the forest on the side of the interstate. Aiden commanded once the two men had gotten back into the White Knight. Aiden would never be soft-hearted toward people who intended harm towards others especially innocents. After this exciting episode, Aiden, Doblar, and the White Knight continued on their way to Arkland City. A new life was about to start.